So the last time uh, when we finished off the video, we were close to getting to about this point. We were in categories and uh, we were able to actually add a laptop, desktop and monitors as products. What I didn't do is at the time show you how to update this. Um, I've gone ahead and done a lot of work on this, but unfortunately, um, my video didn't survive the recording. So I've got about uh, 36 minutes of video that uh, I've now lost. And uh, rather than start over like I did the last time, what I think I'll do is just go through all of the, uh, all the changes that I was able to make uh, and show you how to do it. And I, I, I considered redoing the entire video, but I thought, Maybe I'll, I'll give you the opportunity to go through and do some of these uh, changes on your own because some of the updates are things that you would have already learned in uh, HTML or CSS or stuff that we've already done in this video, which is creating a new um, controller. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm, I'm going to quickly just show you where I left off before I lost all that video. So. Um, products products okay so you can see I've already been in here and what I was able to do is a couple of things here so first off I can do a create new and I could type in the information so uh, I'm just gonna I'll show you for demonstration purposes Dell uh, desktop Okay, description, um, it's larger. Uh, price, okay, so there's one thing if I try to do something like this, okay, um, let's see what happens. I did update this photo thing, but we're gonna get to that in a minute. And I've also got this uh, drop-down list, okay? And we'll talk about how I got to that drop-down list. But if I hit uh, create, in fact, let me take that out for a second, because I want to talk about the uh, some of the validation. So if I try to create, what you're seeing is uh, two possible issues. Right away, uh, I'm getting this. And then the second thing is I'm getting this error because it's looking for a number. Okay, so uh, this here, these product uh, products that I've created, notice they're actually in alph alphabetical order. So those are just some of the things that I was able to change. So if I go ahead and I put that in, um, uh, here, I'll drop that in and I'm gonna say $1,500 as if. Okay, and I say it's a desktop and I'll create. Now notice it's actually in here. Okay, I have all of those items. And not only do I have the items, uh, but there's a couple things I want you to recognize. One, I added this little action header over top of uh, these three editable um, items. Second thing is when I click on these, I can actually change the uh, sorted order. Okay, and you'll know that they they change because if you look at my um, Surface Pro is eight ninety nine, uh, it'll actually move down to the bottom and it's still eight ninety nine. Okay, the categories all change. So if I click on any one of these, I can sort by those, and I can sort by uh, all the different headings except for the photo because I haven't done very much with that yet. And notice I haven't changed this, this title. Okay. So um, what's important to also see is that I've put this into a proper format. So it's a dollar sign with two decimal places. Okay, so if I go to edit, notice there is no dollar sign, but that's just because it's for editing and it's a waste of uh, the user's input to type in the dollar sign, <coughs> excuse me, when all they want is the money. But if I go to the details tab, this is all updated. Okay, and what I want you to understand is that when I changed that currency, I changed it 
in the layout, which meant that I I changed it all throughout the entire. Um, uh, sorry, I didn't change it in the layout. I changed it in one location, and I'll show you where that is, so that everything is updated in the data model. Okay. So there's one last thing we do have to do is we'll go to this website and uh, to get this sortable um, JavaScript uh, library. And that's what allows me to actually use this little drop down arrow to uh, sort the columns the way I want to sort them. Okay. So if we look at the website that I have right now, you notice I've got products, but how did I get the products? Right? When we last, uh, in the last video, we did uh, categories, right? If categories comes back. Okay, so we left off at uh, categories. Your page right now probably says index. But if you want to change that, where do you suppose you have to go? You know that you're in categories. Okay, and we wanted to go from index to product categories. So logically, when you have your categories uh, in your controller, okay, you've also got views here and you've got a model. Okay, so I don't want to be changing my model. That's a .css file right here. But I want to change the view. Okay, and if you're ever kind of unsure where you are, then, then go to here, go to this line four, and it'll tell you um, which file that, you, that I'm actually working in or which file that you need to be in. So if I go to uh, four, yours right here between the H1 should say index. I changed mine to product categories. And because I'm, I'm doing HTML, this is a, um, I'm interpreting, or I just have to refresh this after I save it. It's not um, C sharp where I need to recompile before I can go ahead and use it. So if you want to go ahead in yours to your index, which is under your categories model, um, go ahead and change that now, okay? That's where you wanna make that change. And now, is there anything else in this particular file that I would wanna change? And at the moment, I would say probably not, okay? So you remember how we got that. We created a controller, and the controller over here for categories this is your categories controller. You right clicked and sorry, you go to controllers, right click, you add a controller and you did that. And it went right to here. Okay. If you want to make a products controller, it's the same process altogether. Okay. But here's the good part. You've already got those models in there and building the controller is going to be pretty easy now. So if I say, uh, MVC controller, it defaults now to the entity framework. And here's a great thing right here. It's got all these drop downs. Okay, so for you, if you want to do now the product controller, notice mine says product controller one. That's because I've already been through it. I've already done it once. So it's adding that, uh, that one in there. Okay, kind of like when you save a file of the same type more than one time, it always throws in that extra. So you want to make sure that you're saving in your Georgian computer's context, okay? And then of course the layout, you want that layout. Make sure that you're uh, in your shared common look and feel. That's what that uh, layout file is for. So I'm gonna hit cancel, but you should go ahead and, and uh, hit okay for yours. And because it's CSS now that you've added, go ahead and make sure that you, uh, you save it and then you build it. Okay, I don't need to build mine. But as a result of that, you should get a couple of things. You should get this controller product, uh, product controller. Okay, and I'm just going to minimize that a little bit, but you should be getting this 
products, all these views. So index, edit, details, delete, and create. Okay. So you should have all those things at this point. And if you do, when you open yours up, um, you should actually be able to now go to, I'll, I'll type it in. You should be able to type this in, uh, products. Okay. And you should have something that looks very similar to this. Okay. You're not going to have this updated yet, uh, but you should have name, description, price, photo, category. You should let's see actions. Okay. I'll show you how to do that, uh, those updates momentarily, but you should have something like this. And I, it's very doubtful that you'll even have any data populated in there now at this time. So if I were you, what I would do is go have a look and just type in a name of a computer, make it a desktop. So what I'm trying to say is populate a list like this. It doesn't have to be like mine. Um, you're not going to have, uh, all you're going to see is if you typed in 599, you wouldn't see the dollar sign, but you will see the decimal zero zero. Okay. And then from the drop down, you'll see category, uh, for laptops or desktop. Uh, and in your other cases, it'll be monitor. So I want to, I want to highlight this point for a minute as well. You should be seeing this. You should be getting the desktop laptop and monitors. Okay. They should be drop downs. And the question is why? And I think if you've, uh, if you've been doing any database stuff or advanced database, stuff, the, I think the answer is fairly straightforward to you right now. Cause if you go into your models and let's say I go to, uh, I'll go to my products model. Okay. And what you should be seeing, do I want to go to products model or yeah. so I'm in here and I'm looking for this line right here. Okay. This category ID. And the reason I'm looking for this category ID is because I know back in my database, here's my category. And by the way, yours should say category ID right now, but we can go ahead and change that in a minute. But this should be automatically scaffolded as a drop down menu for you. Okay. So the reason it's scaffolded is right here because of this, this category ID, according to our database models is a foreign key. So we've got that, that, um, relationship between products and categories, which is coincidentally why I started with category. And then I transitioned to products because I know that there's a relationship there. Okay. So if you haven't got to this far, I don't imagine that you would, but, uh, take some time, pause the video and get to this point. And then we're going to go in and do a little bit of additional editing to this particular products, uh, controller. Okay. So go ahead, pause the video and, uh, we'll resume in a moment. Okay. So we're back and I'm hoping you got to this page where you've got the, uh, let me back up one, one page to products. So I'm assuming that you do have all of this. Uh, you shouldn't have the action button. You shouldn't have proper formatting. It shouldn't be right justified. Uh, this should still be index. Um, and I'm hoping that by now you've populated a couple of, uh, couple of items. And if you're doing that, make sure you do uh, something like with three digits and then something with four just for comparison. Okay. And then you should be able to hit this create button and you should have name, uh, all of this stuff as I have it, but yours should not be modified for the photo yet. We're going to come back to that soon, but don't worry. We will get to it. And you should have a drop down. 
based on the uh, categories that we've already made in the past, uh, probably from the last video. Okay, so what I want to do now is uh, notice that I'm in my product dot uh, CSS. Okay, and that is here. So I'm not in the controller. Let me just turn that off and I'll show you. I'm in my my model. Okay, that's where I'm going to do some editing in the model itself. Okay, so if I if I go to my page and I try to just hit create, notice right away, I get these validation errors. Okay, I the value whatever is invalid and product name is required. So what I've done is I've actually, uh, I've changed the message that you would uh, more than likely have seen at this point, but you have the choice to either leave it as is or change it to what I've done. And it's, it's these required tags on here that you see. Uh, can I find another one? No, but there's two things I want you to understand. This one, this required is a keyword. Um, and that tells you from any time you ever learned C, um, HTML that you need to put something in there. But there's this one here. Okay, what this is specifying is that, hey, it has to be a uh, decimal place. Okay, so if you were to go to here right now, let's say and type in, um, like I said before, AAA -A -A and create, AAA is not valid for price. Okay. So that's what that does. Putting this decimal is saying, Hey, I need to see this as a number, but then there's another problem because as it is the way you have it, if I type in 899 with a negative like this, you're not going to get an error. Okay. You won't at this point. That's because over here, um, you have to put this range. So you add this line and it's range. The minimum is zero because you don't want it to be a negative number. And then you can put this long number in here. You could put a million or 10 million or 10,000. It depends on the store. If they don't have any items over 10,000, then you know, only go to uh, 9999. And then this error message. Okay. And notice this is all part of the range uh, function. Okay, all of it. So you're putting in this error message and then price must be between uh, zero and 999,999. Okay. So that will take care of that one particular uh, problem. You're going to have to have a um, decimal or a number and it's going to have to be between a certain range or not. And then the other issue should be that, um, I can't create, so I'll go back to my list, but this is the issue right here, the dollar sign. Okay, you wanna put it into a currency format. And that's what this line does here. And notice I've got all of these, these three lines of code, they are above my price, okay? So to add the dollar sign in front of it, you're gonna have this display format and data formatting string and make sure it's in this, it's zero colon lowercase zero. And they're both inside uh, brackets and quotes. Okay. Uh, these are uh, C sharp functions. They're out of the C sharp library. So that's where this formatting is coming from. Okay. So go ahead, uh, pause the video and make sure that you set yours up in in a similar fashion as well to that. Okay, so I'll go ahead and I'll pause the video. Okay, so you may be asking yourself, like, why am I doing it inside the model? Why am I not doing this in another location? Why am I not doing this in the views? And the reason is, is because I'm validating and formatting the model itself or the data itself. So what this means by attacking the, the model, these formatting changes and validations will persist all the way throughout the entire web application. If I try to do it in a view. I'm only going to do it in that particular view. 
And since I'm passing in data from one view to another, um, I would have to go in and try to update every one of those views. And I don't want to do that. It's not efficient at all. So what I'm doing is as I move data around inside the application, it's always moving with its format in place. So that's why I'm doing it inside the, uh, inside the model. Okay. Uh, so it's important to, to understand why I'm doing that in where. Okay, so what else is new? Um, let's go to uh, let's go to details. Okay. Uh, no, let's. Okay, everything looks okay there. I find that a little bit close, but that's not a big deal. Uh, back to list. Is there something else I want to change in here? What about editing? Um, this here, I, I'd like to actually go in and change this. Uh, I'd like this to be alphabetical, okay? Because there could be, say, 20, 30, 50, 100 different products. And I want to be able to go in there and, and change that. So if I'm scrolling down, I'm just scrolling down on a list and I'm, I'm looking for it alphabetically, okay? So let's go ahead and make those changes. Okay, so in order for me to change that, uh, that uh, put that category list into an alphabetical order, I actually have to go to my products controller, okay, over here. And if I go to my product controller and I go to create, um, by the way, you can select all your methods or functions if you want, and it'll bring you right to it. So you won't have exactly what I've got. Yours could actually probably not have this line of code right here. And this is what you need to add to, to your line of code. So it is a dot order by uh, and C with this lambda or a fat arrow and then C dot name. Okay, and close off the bracket as well. So you're just basically adding uh, this little line of code right here, which should then update yours. So I've put this uh, I put this comment in there. Uh, you're adding an order by clause to the category query. Okay, C is a parameter, um, and that you're using the lambda or fat arrow operator for this anonymous function. Okay, so that's all you have to do by putting in this much code here, and you go back to your actual form. That's what I, that's what should be putting this into alphabetical order. And if I go back to list, and then let's say I go to uh, details, not details, back to list, um, edit, see it's in desktop. So you, okay. Which is interesting because it's not right now in an alphabetical order. So why don't I create one? Notice it's in desktop, then laptop, then monitors. But what was happening there a second ago is that it was uh, selecting from desktop being the very first one. So right away, it defaults back to desktop. That's why it wasn't pre uh, appearing in alphabetical order when I did that. And because it's selected, it changes the order. Okay, so that's uh, it's a simple line of code. It seems not to be the most intuitive place to put it, but that's exactly where it has to go. So we want to put it in your products controller and add this, and that will make your drop-down list alphabetical. Okay. There's something new that I want to change in your uh, column heading. It's highly likely that you're going to see something that says category ID. Um, if it's not there, it might be here, category ID. Okay. I don't want it to say ID. I just want it to have that simple word category. And now notice where we're, we are is in the uh, create view, okay? So if you notice right here, it says create. So that should give you a clue as to where we want to go. So if I go back to uh, my uh, Visual Studio and I've already got it open, but uh, in my products, I'll close it just to show you exactly where it is. Products create in my view. Notice I've got all the um, the actual heading rows. So I've got uh, name, description, price, photo, category, 
yours will say category ID right now. All you have to do for the label of that column is just to edit that and remove the ID. Just remove that ID keyword and then go ahead and save it, refresh it, and it should update uh, on your screen. Okay, so go ahead and do that and I'll pause the video. So if I remember correctly on my page when I had this, I went to my uh, create. I believe it says create and then down below it says uh, product. So that would be an H1 and an H4 probably. So if I stay in that same uh, create.css, I can just go up to the H1 and update that to say create a new product. Okay, so do that and then probably get rid of the uh, H4 for the word product and it should, uh, should display it the way I have it shown here, okay? So what else do we want to change that I don't like about this? Um, why don't we go ahead and tackle this right here? Okay, I'm going to tackle this uh, item right here. I'm not going to connect it to anything. I'm just going to change the box itself to show this browse. And it fully functions, but it's not going to save to anything, okay? So where do you think I should go to change that? Okay, where do you suppose? What would be a good place for me to do that? And let's let's see if there's a hint as to where I could do that. So I'm in create. Okay, but I go back to here and I'm still in create. And what is the name of that? That's photo, right? So all we have to do is simply add this line of code. This type equals file. Uh, there may be something there I can't remember, but what I want to do is add this type equals uh, file in quotations. And it will, in fact, update that to the way you're seeing mine here. And it will be fully functional. Uh, you can click on it and it'll browse to somewhere. Okay. So go ahead and update yours and then um, we'll move on to the next thing. So there's another thing that I'd like to update here. And uh, what this is, is when we get to our page and if I go back to my list, notice how all of mine is right justified. Okay, so I've got one comma 500.00. All the, the right hand side of the zeros line up under the price column. So I wanna go ahead and update that. So I'm actually in my index again for product, okay, which is down here, right down here. So if I close that and I go back to index, uh, you'll see that I've I've got this um, this table. Okay, yours right now will just say table, but soon enough we're going to add the sortable. Okay, so we've got the table, and then down here we've also got a for each loop. Okay, there's the for each for your model. And where it says price, okay, this is the TD that I'm looking for. So you're just adding this class right here that says text right. And your, your IntelliSense should pick that up. And uh, you should be able to just, you know, select that from the dropdown. So if not, type in the class equals uh, quotations text hyphen right quotations. Okay, and that is what's going to allow you to line up all of that uh, right justified. Okay. So I want to add this here as well, this actions. And uh, the, it's a simple, simple thing to do. Uh, if we stay where we were in the products index page, uh, you'll notice that with all of these TH tags, um, You'll have one at the bottom, it'll be empty, okay? And it'll look just like that. So what I wanna do is just type in this actions and then go ahead and uh, refresh that onto your screen and you should see this button appear here, okay? So go ahead and do that. And the next thing we're gonna do is I'm actually gonna show you now how to do this. It's a little bit tricky, but uh, it's not actually too bad, okay? so. In Blackboard uh, this week, I will post the link to this uh, website. 
okay? I'll post it there. But before I do anything, what I want to do is I want to I want to get the um, the path, the file path. So I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to go down to open folder in file explorer. So I'm going to click that. But before I do it, um, there's some in this www root. Uh, if you look here, we have uh, JS, our JS file. You right now only have site.js. I'm going to show you how to put this sortable in there. Okay. So by going and uh, opening your file in here, what I want you to do is go to www root here and to JavaScript. Okay. And then right click on that, do a control C to copy it. Right. Then go to this website that I've got here. It's um, it's called the uh, cryogenics.org code browser uh, sortable, and I'll put the link in Blackboard for you. In fact, I think it's already there. So I'm going to go down to this JavaScript library. Don't click on it. The download. Don't click the download. You're going to right click on it. Okay and save target as okay so this will pop up okay and now yours is going to take you to somewhere else more than likely so that's why i copied that link and now i can paste it into here and navigate straight to it and then leave it as it is it's already a javascript file and just hit save okay i've already done it so i'm not going to do it but just hit save okay and navigate back to your uh, file folder and you should now see the sortable.js is inside your project file. And if you don't believe me, you can go back to Visual Studio right here and open up your uh, root.js and you should see sortable.js in there. Okay, so how do we use this? I'm going to show you right now. We need to go into our layout. And the reason we're gonna go into the layout is because that is the one file that has all the common look and feel. So if I go to shared layout.css, okay, this is where we, we need to go. I'm gonna go all the way down to the bottom and put this line of code in. And I'll show you a little quick shortcut that you can do. Okay, take this. It's on the web, web page. Uh, control C this, go back here, and I'll just show it to you. I'm going to Control V, but you're not there yet because you haven't linked or you haven't uh, pathed it back to where we want to use it here. What you need to do is actually grab this. Okay, the tilde and the backslash, copy that, and paste it right in there. Now you've got the code that you're looking for, okay? So now that you have that, how do I go and use it? Well, let's try it out. You can't try it out until you actually come back up here. So we're back in products, index. Okay, so right now on this line 13, you should have just this. So yours is gonna look like this. Okay, that's how yours is going to look. But what you need to do to include that is actually put that back in there. Now, an important thing, there's only one T. Don't add two, it's a single T. So just add that word right in there. Okay, go ahead and save everything. Um, just, just to be careful, go ahead and do a build of your entire solution in case you've introduced any errors somehow. Okay, looks like so far so good. I haven't. And I'm going to go back to my page, to mine. Okay, and I can just do a refresh. If for some reason the refresh doesn't work for you, um, then just go back a page and then say back to list. Okay, you may not see it right off the bat, but it'll be in there as soon as you refresh the page unless there's something else wrong. Did I save everything? 
Yes, and yes, I saved everything. Okay, and in my layout. Ah, I forgot something. That's why it changed it. And I hope that when you were watching this, you'll notice that I did break mine. And it's right here. Okay, I forgot to add this. Okay, so I need to add the uh, JS slash, which is, if you look at the file path, it's this JS. I needed to path this properly, and I wasn't properly pathed. I hope you noticed that in York. Anyway, we'll go ahead and we'll, uh, we'll update that. And I'm gonna go back to mine, refresh that. And it takes a little bit too long, if you ask me. And now I click on it and you see the little arrow popped up right there. Okay, so by that, I just click on that and I can go to description, I can go and do it all by price. And everything should be updated. So now you should be uh, up to speed with exactly where I left off before I lost the previous recording. Okay, so let's now do something new. Something that kind of does bother me is that when I kind of hover over these, um, unless you've used this before, you don't really know that it's uh, an option that you have. So I, I think I want to go in and change that. I, I just, I don't like it. So what I think I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to add these little uh, um, A references, okay? So just bear with me for a second. Uh, we're now at a new part of the video. Okay, so A, href, href, yeah, equals, and I'm going to do a post and a hashtag. Okay, give me, give me a little space there and I'll close up the tag. Okay, and then I'm going to move this all the way out here. And that should be good. So now what I need to do is I'll pause the video so that I can go and do all of them. So I've gone and I've done all of them and uh, I just did not do this final one at the bottom. So uh, if ever some your formatting kind of gets out of whack, one thing you can do is just uh, hold down your control and go control uh, KD and it'll automatically format your uh, your code in the right spacing and indentation. So now if I go back to my page, I'll do a refresh and uh, we'll see what the new updated changes are. Okay, so you can see now my cursor changes when I go over top and there's the line underneath. I don't need to do that for actions, okay? But now it, it, it's more visually obvious that there's something going on there, okay? Good. And uh, depending on what your uh, CSS formatting is right now, or if you change that loose uh, bootstrap template, yours might be uh, a different color or blue. Um, that's just a function of what you did with your uh, CSS bootstrapping or whatever it is that you wanted to do. So yours might be a different color or not. It doesn't matter if it is, as long as there's a line under it and the arrow or your cursor changes to a finger. Okay, that's a, something called affordance that people are used to seeing certain things almost intuitively. Um, so that's a case where it's, it's now fairly obvious that that's something I can click on by putting my mouse over it. I just realized something that uh, I probably shouldn't have done. I don't think I needed to put these, uh, the tags for photo either. I, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to sort it by photo. Uh, I don't think that's probably a, a good thing to do. And one other thing I think I would like to do is uh, I'd like to change places. I'm going to put my photo at the very end. And the way I can do that, if you didn't know already, is you can uh, just do Alt and up arrow after you highlight something and it will move it up and down. It's just a good little uh, set of short keys. So I'm going to go back and you'll see photo is there. I want my photo to be at the end. So 
if I update this. Ah, look at what happened. I've got my laptops that are still there. So what I have to do is go back down to here as well. Okay, and let's change where my photo is. Okay, and let's see if that made any difference whatsoever. Okay. Okay, let's see if it made any big differences. Yeah. So I had to move in both the for each loop and here. And I'm, I'm noticing there's a little bit of a misalignment uh, with the way that's now presenting itself, but I'm not overly concerned at this moment. Okay, so uh, I'll go back and uh, let's just see something. Edit, go back to my list. Okay, so everything is persisting as I wanted it to. But I did notice this kind of price keeps seem, seems to be floating far over to the right more than I want it to. So I will find a way uh, momentarily to fix that as well. Okay, maybe I'm being overly picky, I don't know. But uh, for some reason, I, I just, I don't like the way that's laying out. So what I think I will do is I'm gonna change the order of, of some of these. So I'm going to move a uh, description down below. Uh, actually, I'm going to move category. Okay, I'm going to move category beside my uh, my name. Okay, and then I want description next. And then I want price and then I want photo. Okay, so I need to move the same thing here again. And I'm going to move my category to be after. So I've got name, category, description, price, photo. Okay, so I'm good. I, I just, maybe it's just being overly picky, but I think uh, what I want to be able to see is the price with the photo at the very end. And let's go and check out the, the new results. Okay, so that price is going all wonky again, and uh, maybe I'll I'll look at it another time. Right now, it's it's not bugging me enough to go ahead and want to want to uh, do anything too drastic to it. Okay. So what else do we want to do? Yes, before we forget, uh, or I forget, I'm going to change this to say uh, products. That's better. Okay, and let's go back and have a look. It's better than seeing uh, a list, of, you know, index. So have a look at that. There, products. Okay, what's next? So I just couldn't live with it, uh, with the editing of this price thing. So instead of this uh, text just or text right, I switched it to justify. Uh, I think it just looks a little better. Um, you can see it here. I've already updated it. So I'm happier with that. And I'm just going to leave it alone before it drives me crazy. Okay, so there is, uh, there is something I do want to actually add to this as well. Um, we, we put in this sortable. And I think... When it comes to tables, it kind of is not the most sophisticated thing. So what I want to actually do is you notice here that uh, as I highlight the line, it changes. So I'll go back to my Visual Studio Code and I'm actually going to add in this. So as you type this in, you're going to get, um, you'll get to your IntelliSense that grabs this. It's table striped and table hover. Okay, and make sure again that that word doesn't disappear from what you're doing. So when I go ahead and I save that and then I update that, that's what you're getting there. So I can still do this, but notice uh, if I had more categories, it's just better for the user experience to know which line they're actually on. Okay. So I've decided uh, for the time being anyway, that I'm 
I think I'm not going to do. Um, I'm not going to do the updating of photos and stuff like that. I, I think I'm going to wait. Uh, I'm going to come back to that. Um, sorry. I'm going to come back to that. Uh, this box here at another time. Okay, so to be perfectly honest, I think I'm going to knock it off there uh, for this video. This is going to be a much lighter week than last time. Uh, I'd like you just to work on some of the stuff that we've done today and uh, get to this point. And uh, next week we're going to actually uh, come back, uh, make a few more changes, but I want to talk about uh, authentication. So that's what we're going to do next week. Um, at some point, yes, I'll come back and finish off the, uh, the photo, uh, piece, but, uh, I, I think I've gone far enough for what I want to do today. Next week we'll do authentication and then, um, we've got some more, uh, cleaning up to do. There's, there's much more to go on this particular website. We haven't even done the, uh, the client side. This has all been the back end that, uh, the customers don't necessarily see. We still have to build out the front end for uh, your customers to go to your web page and shop. So we've got lots and lots to do. So for now, let's just uh, knock it off there today and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.